Good afternoon, I'm Herman Green with the Midday News. Special welcome to viewers watching on OneSpotMedia.com. A reminder as well that you can watch TVJ live by downloading our OneSpot Media app in the Google Play Store or the App Store. As Jamaicans continue to react to the recent spike in murders across the island, there are renewed calls for hanging to be considered once again. With at least five murders in Hanover in the past five days, Member of Parliament for Hanover Western, Ian Hales, is leading the call. I think as an entire country, we find ourselves each evening locking ourselves away, going home early. You can't, you're afraid to go to church, you're afraid to go to night service, you're afraid to go to your kids' graduation, you're afraid to send your kids on the road. We are living in fear. He says as it is, the justice system is not a deterrent to criminals. He believes that many Jamaicans, including some of his fellow MPs, share his view that hanging should be resumed, and he has a suggestion to start the process. Whether it is we by referendum or otherwise, in terms of hanging, you need to call your member of parliament, and you need to call the parliament. So I'm saying to every Jamaican who believe that we need to bring back hanging in this country because I can tell you something you know Jamaica is either them kill us or we kill some of them to ensure that the majority of Jamaicans live with Jamaica facing a 19 percent increase in murders Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF is in transition mode to improve its crime fighting efforts and that the force will transition into an intelligence-driven organization that relies on information gathering, on big data analysis, on strategic planning to give them a more targeted approach to separate the criminals from the law-abiding citizens. Mr. Holness was speaking yesterday at the Multilateral Summit to Combat Crime. He also called for increased collaboration between the prosecution and the police to secure convictions. The government's position on Jamaica's buggery law will only be changed by referendum. Justice Minister Delroy Chuck made the assertion during a Justice of the Peace training seminar held yesterday. The government's position is clear and I repeat it. The law will not be changed save and accept by a referendum. So the Bogre law will never be changed unless a referendum so decide. He maintains, however, that though he does not approve of homosexuality, he is not in support of homophobia. I am against homosexuality. Quite frankly, I believe it's wrong. But at the same time, I believe it is equally wrong for anyone to promote homophobia. That is hatred of those who disagree with you. Mr. Chuck's comments stem from harsh criticism directed at him for implying that the church and the faith-based organizations were hindering the push to repeal the Bogre law. There remains lingering concern from the human rights community about the changes being made to the proposed National Identity and Registration Bill. Director at Jamaicans for Justice, Roger Malcolm, has endorsed the changes made so far, but warns of the invasive nature of the system and the potential for abuse. While speaking yesterday on RGR's Beyond the Headlines, Mr. Malcolm said the changes have reduced some of the power of the administrators of the system, but constitutional issues remain. Perhaps the most, the more, most concerning section allows any public authority, any government office, to require your ID number and your ID card as a condition for giving you any service. So you want to register your car, you want to pay your tax, a public authority can say, where is your car, where is your ID number? If you don't have the ID number, you can't get the service. 
does raise some constitutional concerns. For example, if I have the constitutional right to education to my children, right, and a public school requires the ID card as a condition for you accessing it, what what area trumps the other? Does the need to register trump the need, the public, the access of the public to the public goods that their taxpayers fund sort out? So the regulations, we would hope, would clarify some of these questions. Director General of the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Man Management, ODPEM, Major Clive Davis, is urging persons to take seriously the advisory from the Meteorological Service of bad weather across sections of the island starting today. The advisory says light to moderate showers, which could be heavy at times, and thunderstorms will affect most parishes through to Sunday evening. Windy conditions are expected starting tomorrow. The bad weather is associated with a developing area of low pressure, which is expected to induce a trough west of Jamaica. Major Davis is urging persons to take the necessary precautions. If you're in an accommodation and flooding is observed, get out. Get to a safer place, get to one of the shelters, or get to a neighbor's place. For our fisher folk, I would like to warn you also that there is an indication that the winds could be strong. And so we would want you to take every reasonable precaution. And if it is uh, not necessary, we might have to issue, I mean, if it becomes necessary, I'm sorry, we may then issue another advisory asking fisher folk to stay in, 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 in shore. In the meantime, Major Davis says emergency response agencies are on standby in the wake of the weather advisory. At this time, both the local authorities and the national system have been informed, national response agencies informed, and they are in a high state of preparedness to respond in the event that it becomes necessary. The Water Resources Authority says it's currently conducting dye tracing exercises in the Rio Bueno watershed in Trelawney. The dyes were injected in the Quashi River near Freeman's Hall and the Low River near Waterbait in the parish on Wednesday. Member of the public, members of the public rather, are expected expressed alarm after videos circulated on social media showed the water had turned red. The project involves the insertion of a dye to trace the flow path of the river. The Water Resources Authority says the dye being used is non-toxic and will dissipate in the next few days. A major fire at the largest supermarket in Hanover has left operators reeling from what they say is a major setback and a setback for them and the residents. The blaze started sometime after 10 o'clock Wednesday night and kept firefighters who got to the scene shortly after busy from then until 11 o'clock Thursday morning. The store, Cherry's Supermarket, in Hanover's capital, Lucy, was totally gutted. The operators estimate that the losses could amount to over $100 million. It's still unclear what caused that fire. Taxi operators in Spanish Town St. Catherine say they are in favor of the removal of the gas tax instead of a fare increase. The operators say commuters are struggling to pay the current fares. This, they believe, will only be made worse with the fare increase. On a daily basis, people fear it short. And a fare increase, they can't afford it at no time at all. So we're asking the government to reduce the gas to take the tax off the gas price because really and truly the poor people them can't afford it at all it's beyond us and so them, it, it, it is very stressful each day i work for pay boss and they know the affi the money there at all so the gas price i kill me it kill and, and it's a he adds that previously five thousand dollars of fuel could serve his vehicle for a week that figure has jumped to seven thousand is that we Jamaican sit on our way and also nothing. It didn't ship out with Techie. The point is now that the gas price, the tax, need to go. Because the tax don't go and the, and the fare increase, they can't afford it. Everybody sit on and say nothing. I, I can't live with it. The St. Catherine Health Department is warning persons along the Rio Cobre to avoid coming in contact with the water due to the continued presence of raw sewage from a National Water Commission plant. Acting Chief Public Health Inspector for St. Catherine, Grayson Hutchinson says the NWC is yet to complete repairs to broken sewage, sewage mains connected to, it, co connected to its De La Vega oxidation ponds. This has resulted in effluent being dumped into the river. 
Last week, Thursday, the health department served a five-day notice on the NWC for it to undertake remedial work. However, Hutchinson says the department conducted an inspection at the facility on Monday and was informed that a sewer main that was put in place to correct the problem had collapsed. He says the health department granted an extension to the NWC to give it time to complete the repairs. The notice expires today. And the time now for our Fact or Fiction feature. Fact or Fiction. In 1770, the Kingston Public Hospital catered only for black Jamaicans. And we go on to sports. The reggae boys are back home from their international friendly in Peru before getting ready for their next tournament, the Caribbean Cup in Martinique, that starts in four days' time. A 3-1 defeat is expected to leave a bitter taste in anyone's mouth. But it's not the exact case for the reggae boys who were beaten by Peru in their friendly international on Tuesday in that country. Assistant coach Jerome Waite says the result was disappointing, but the game must be seen for what it was. First and foremost, remember it's a practice game and we play at a high altitude and that is over 7,000 feet above sea level. It wasn't an easy one because one of the main objectives was to give these local based players the opportunity to compete at this level for the first time and to, to, to get a taste of it to see what it's all about. However, Wade believes that the local based players fell short of what was expected. They didn't show much. As what I outlined earlier, the, the altitude was pretty much difficult. But I think they, they have done the, their part in which we still expected more, but it's a work in progress. Striker Shamar Nicholson was getting his second start, but he's yet to find his first goal. He says it was pretty rough and intense, but believes he could have done more. Yes, I'm willing to put in the work and I hope it will come one day. Once I put in the work, I know it will come because I'm a natural goal scorer, but it's in the pipeline though. They will also miss out on the services of defenders Adrian Mariapa and Michael Hector for the Caribbean Cup. Well, Mariapa is on a 12-week injury. He did a uh, major, minor surgery to his left knee, so he's, he's out. Hector has indicated that he's not available for the Caribbean Cup and the Gold Cup. Wes Morgan was also being targeted for the Gold Cup. Wes Morgan, as we all knew, had had some injury issues at the ending of his season, so he will not be available. I don't. I, I can. I can. I can say that we will not have any UK players in the Gold Cup squad. U.S.-based players Corey Burke, O'Neill Fisher, Sergio Campbell, and Sean Francis will all be available for the Caribbean Cup. Spencer Darlington, TVJ Sports. Finally, this afternoon, the answer to our fact or fiction feature. We asked fact or fiction. In 1770, the Kingston Public Hospital catered only for Jamaica's black population. Well, it's fiction. The Kingston Public Hospital, KPH, was established in 1776 and catered only for Jamaica's white population at the time. In 1838, after emancipation, the hospitals started to accept slaves. Initially, KPH was designed as an almshouse as well as a hospital, but then became a mental asylum, which was later relocated to Raytown, St. Andrew, in 1850. In 1936, the then senior medical officer separated surgical from med medical cases from the, for the first time. From these humble beginnings, KPH has evolved into the largest multidisciplinary hospital in the government's health service, as well as the largest trauma center in the public hospital system. The institution continues to be regarded as one in which sophisticated surgery is practiced on several scales and continues to contribute significantly to surgery in Jamaica. And that's the Midday News. I'm Herman Green. Join us at 7 for our primetime news package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon and have a great weekend.